Dear Pastor, here's why you need to listen to this group of people condescendingly known as flat earthers, for they hold yet more evidence that the scriptures that you hold are 100% true and possibly the key that unlocks the deceptions of the last days. So before your mind contests, please consider the following minutes. To start, here are the only two scriptures that you'll be able to think of that suggest the earth is a spinning ball flying through space. They are Isaiah 40.22 and Job 26.7. In Isaiah 40.22, Isaiah talks about the circle of the earth. Agreed. However, something can be a circle and flat, just like a pizza. Isaiah uses the Hebrew word for ball in Isaiah 22.18 when referring to something being tossed like a ball. Yet in 40.22, he describes the earth and he uses the word circle. And I'll show you why that is accurate in the literal biblical model. Continuing on, in Job 26.7, it talks about how God hangs the earth on nothing, which again, I agree. However, the Hebrew word for earth only means land or soil, and it's true that it doesn't hang on anything. It's set on a foundation and on pillars, just like it says later in Job 38, and these are God's words, not Job's. Bottom line, we could go into over 200 verses that describe a still, flat earth set on pillars under a solid firmament with water above it. But all you have to do is Google Hebrew cosmology and you will find an image similar to this. This is what the Hebrew writers of the Bible and today's most studied Hebrew scholars agree the authors were describing about their world. It's the world that aligns with a literal reading of the scriptures and everything that we experience every day. So if your brain can just accept that for now, we won't even have to go into how God stopped the sun and moon for Joshua, or how the mechanics of the Big Bang do not allow for an earth to be created three days prior to the sun in Genesis 1. The fact is, the entire concept of what we have as space and anything beyond the surface of the earth comes from NASA, the group that claims that this is real. That this is real. And that both of these are real. The group constantly getting caught on live feeds with men in the background of models, harnesses on the International Space Station, and bubbles and scuba gear on spacewalks, whose name in Hebrew can mean to lift up like a rocket to space, or to beguile like the serpent beguiled Eve in the garden. And wouldn't you know it, the NASA logo has a nice big serpent tongue in it, or as the Hebrew word Lashon describes, a fork of flame. Not to mention that NASA's genesis doesn't begin with God, but rather with a group of Nazis, Freemasons, and magicians that name most of their missions after false demigods. Now, back to the Hebrew concept of the world in which we live. Here is a bird's eye view over the North Pole of the most widely accepted flat earth map, which also happens to be the flag of the United Nations. You can see how circumnavigation would still be possible from east to west and west to east. And here are the routes of people who claim to have circumnavigated it north to south. You can see how Antarctica is no longer a continent at the bottom of the globe, but rather a continental ice shelf that holds the waters in place. And just like you can't fall off a lake, you can't fall off the flat earth because of the Antarctic shoreline. Utilizing the fact that it is the tallest landmass by average elevation, it bounds the waters just as described in Job 26.10 and Proverbs 34. We see here through the use of high-powered ground-based lenses and infrared technology that ships do not sail over the curve and that land masses that should be thousands of feet below the horizon suddenly become visible. We see on dry days when the sun doesn't get magnified during sunset that it is not setting due to the earth spinning but rather by retreating beyond our ability to see, similar to a ship on the horizon due to perspective. So if things like sunrise, sunset, circumnavigation, and not falling off the edge have similarly simple explanations, it's rational to think that your other questions also have simple explanations. After all, people were existing just fine and predicting celestial phenomena accurately for thousands of years before they were told they were on a spinning ball. And just because something appears to correlate to living on a spinning ball does not mean that it's caused by it. 
just like when I go eat lunch at noon, my action of eating correlates to the clock striking noon, but the clock did not cause me to go eat. So I invite you to dig deeper into any of these topics and any others that may surface. This video is not meant to be an all-inclusive masterpiece, but rather a sign pointing to a door that needs to be opened. For me, the biggest evidence is not the lack of curvature, or clips of NASA getting caught faking space, or the fact that all their pictures of Earth describe it as an image or a composite. It is the why. In Romans 1, we see that how you can get to know the invisible attributes of God, including his eternal power, through the things that were made. So if you can actually get to know God through the study and appreciation of his creation, of course there is going to be an evil agenda to dilute that. And how do you dilute something? Well, you pour it into something bigger, like infinite space, and you convince people that they are merely statistical probabilities of an ever-expanding, potentially infinite universe, creating a godless religion of scientism which is diametrically opposed to every line of scripture on page one of the Bible. Remember, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees, telling them that they could discern the face of the sky and the earth, but they couldn't discern the age in which they were living, meaning that their cosmology was correct. And what was their cosmology? We need to be able to discern the times and the deceptions in which we live, so I invite you to open your mind, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, and let God be true and every man a liar. God bless. God is an ever-receding pocket of scientific ignorance. All the things that matter for evolution weren't created at the beginning of time. They're created in the nuclear furnaces of stars, and the only way they can get into your body is if the stars were kind enough to explode. So forget Jesus. The stars died so that you could be here today. What is gravity? You have no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> Wow. No, here's the difference. We can describe gravity. We can say what it does to other things. We can, we can measure it, predict with it. But when you start asking, like, what it is, I, I, I don't know. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And oh, okay. So if the Earth were actually this uh, this size, uh, the International Space Station would be orbiting about a half an inch above the surface. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> like, we'd have way better CGI if it was fake.